guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the Mounds, North Carolina. I figured today was a good day to go ahead and take care of part three of why I miss Radio Shack and why you should as well. Ah, Radio Shack. Today we'll be looking at Radio Shack's computer line. Yeah, the Tandy computers. Eventually they were called, uh, well, we had the TRS-80, we had Tandys. And I think, uh, I think when Radio Shack finally finished itself off in the computer industry, they were selling AST computers, which is a shame. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start way back in the beginning of time to the 1977 year when the Trifecta, those three computers, the trinity of home computers, entered the market. And those were the Commodore PET, the Apple II, and the TRS-80, which later went on to be called the TRS-80 Model One. These were very influential computers. These started the home computer revolu revolution. And although Apple gets a lot of the credit, Commodore coming in a close second, it's actually TRS-80s and, and those little Model 1s were a big part of it as well. They kind of get forgotten when we talk about that. But I'm telling you, the TRS-80 Model 1 and then uh, was followed up quickly by the TRS-80 Model 2. While the TRS-80 Model 2 wasn't really a home computer, more of a business use computer, they split the line there, and the, the TRS-80 Model 2 became the, uh, gosh, what was it, the 16, I think it was, TRS-80 Model 16, and uh, and then it was the TRS-80 Model 6000, and those were business, like Unix running business systems. Well, the TRS-80 Model 2 had uh, CPM, which was the big, big operating system of the day. I'm not sure what the 16 took, but the 6000 could run Unix, multi-user system, pretty fancy. But uh, and I had the opportunity to use a few of those. Those were it was a weird time in life. I mean, you you would buy these computers for your office, and let's say you were running, um, you know, let's say you were running an automotive shop. That's that's where I always default to because that's where most of my career has been spent. You would uh, buy these computers. Let's say two or three workstations and a central computer, and then you would pay somebody a whole independent company, sometimes through Radio Shack, sometimes independently, to build the software, to create the software to run your business. Think about how cool that was. What a great time to, to be in the in this system, huh? But anyway, back to the home computer line. We moved on from the TRS-80 Model 1 to the TRS-80 Model 3, and it's like one of the most iconic-looking computers of all time. It's just beautiful. The Battleship Gray, you know, equipped with either none, one, or two disk drives internally. Black and white screen, 64 characters across. And, of course, it had some shortcomings. You know, people were using... CPM mostly for business work, and these computers uh, lacked a lot of graphical capabilities. They had no sound capabilities. Well, you could kind of get sound out of the cassette port if you tried real hard, but Radio Shack fixed that problem by creating the Model 4, which was really an awesome computer. And I have had a Model 4P, which is the portable version, a Model 4, and a Model 4D, which was the uh, dual density drive model, which was really a great computer. They fixed all the shortcomings, they made it CPM compatible. They gave it 80 columns across. The later models had a monochrome screen, which was vastly superior to the black and white screen their Model 3 had. And they had these double density drives, which really gave them quite a bit of capacity because most of the programs that uh, ran on these things were quite small. So if you, it was almost like having a hard drive when you had two double density drives on these. And of course you could chain two extra ones on there. And there were gigantic 5, 10, and 15 megabyte hard drives that were available at the time. And while the vast majority of those went off to the business line still there were folks out there that had them set up on the model threes and model fours i you know i would have loved to have seen a model five <laughs> or six or i wonder where we'd be right now here's somebody who's retrofitted one with a flat screen and you know it's running windows 10 probably but it would have been nice to see the continuation they did have some plans for it and uh, none that ever got out of the development phase apparently but Alongside of that, of course, there was the color computer line, which, although nowhere near as successful as, say, the Atari uh, home computer line or the Commodore line, were still pretty darn cool. The original color computer, which was that Battleship Gray, the Cocoa one, and then they came out with a color computer too, which was really the meat and potatoes of the line. I'd say that computer was out there the longest, 64K of RAM, color graphics, some sound. And while it paled in comparison to the Commodore 64 or, uh, you know, an, an Apple, or not an Apple product, but say uh, Atari 600 or 800 XL. It was still a pretty good system and a cartridge base for the most part, but you could also add floppy drives and, and other accessories to it. They rounded out that system about the time the 128 came out, uh, Commodore 128 came out. They came out with a Coco 3. And I don't have a whole lot of experience with the color computer line, but I will say, 
Coco 3, from what I understand, was actually quite an advanced computer for its time. I mean, it was it was on the downward stroke of the 8-bit line, but it did manage to pull off some pretty incredible feats. So I always thought that Radio Shack really did put a lot of love into that system, even though it never caught the kind of traction. And then, of course, we also had the pocket computers. And these things, as a kid, man, they, these interested me more than anything else. This handheld computer that you could do all kinds of cool stuff with. In reality, they were probably more along the lines of a scientific calculator than a computer, but they did have a form of basic. They were able to do some dot matrix type graphics, and they did make quite a bit of them. I remember a friend at school had the PC6, which is pictured here, yeah, but there was a bunch of them. And again, they had a lot of accessories available for them, printers, tape, uh, tape deck adapters, so you could use micro cassette recorders on them. And I think these were actually made by Sharp, but uh, Tandy... I think you'll find far more Tandy pocket computers on the market than you will Sharps. And as well as the pocket computers, they also really revolutionized. They came out with the very first laptop, like genuine laptop, that being the uh, TRS-80 Model 100 and the 101 and 102. Those were also, I think, uh, Sharp computers, but they were, they were extremely popular. They lasted well past when they should have probably faded away. Very primitive computers. And I've owned one of those. In fact, I did a video on one somewhere in my uh, system here. You'll see on my page, you'll find one. But yeah, they, they had a built-in modem, they had built-in software, and they had built-in battery backed up memory. So while they didn't have uh, you know a hard drive uh, or a floppy drive attached to them, you could save to a tape. But for the most part, you could save your files right to active memory and just save it into battery backed up memory, which made them really, really helpful. And, and my understanding is that uh, many journalists and such were carrying these things. They also had the advantage that they ran on AA batteries, which is just incredible to me that that they uh, that they functioned on AA batteries for quite a few hours. So it was, a, it was a pretty pretty cool. And of course, like all home computer makers, they eventually moved on to IBM compatible computers. And um, I have no recollection of these computers other than having seen them in the store and played with them a bit. I never owned one. I thought uh, briefly about buying a specific one, the Tandy 1000 EX or HX, uh, the all-in-one unit, kind of looks like a Commodore 128. Uh, but I've never been able to find one uh, for a reasonable price. But yeah, the Tandy 1000 line came out. And while it was originally designed to compete more with the uh, IBM PC Junior, which was an utter failure, they quickly moved sideways and turned it into a pretty much an IBM PC compatible with a little extra graphics and a little sound capability. And these computers did quite well through the uh, you know early to mid 80s. It was towards the end of the 80s when the Tandy 3000s and 4000s were coming out that somebody upstairs decided, hey, you know what, it's time to drop the line here. So Tandy, and I kind of, I'm bummed by it, but Tandy got out of the system. They got out of the market, and I believe they were selling AST computers towards the end there. And then they just exited the market altogether, no longer selling computers. Although, I remember, I'm going to say it was 2010, 2011, something like that, going to a Radio Shack for a Black Friday event, and they had an AST-branded laptop there for sale. So they were still occasionally carrying laptops, but more often than not, what it became was more of a place to get cables or mice or... Um, keyboards and uh, stuff like that. It wasn't really a place to go to get actual hardware, although they did sometimes carry that stuff, you know, past the, let's say, the mid to late 90s. Anyway, that that's it. You know, the story of, of Radio Shack uh, is one we pretty much know pretty well at this point. It's it's slowly making a comeback, which is great to see. And of course, if you watch some of my videos, you've seen I've visited an open store or two in my time since they all went out of business, supposedly. But the Radio Shack computer era was a big one in my life. Going to those stores before I ever got my first home computer, uh, probably one of the earliest exposures I had to working computers, to be able to sit in the store and play with a demo and uh, Deskmate. I remember Deskmate being a big deal both on the color computer line and the Tandy 1000 line, so I did get my feet wet playing on that and stores and talking with, back then, they had very knowledgeable staff, so it was kind of cool. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, someday here shortly, I will finally produce part four, which is going to be covering CB and ham radio stuff. Probably the majority of my viewers are most interested in that episode, but I don't think we could talk about Radio Shack without talking about the TRS-80 or Tandy line of computers, and so that's what this has been all about. I hope you have enjoyed this, and, uh, well, I'll see you next time. Take care.
always something that needs a little fixing on Farpoint Farm. 